glad to have each and every one of you with us today. <coughs> Good to see you. Brother Cole, you know, is going to be coming back in April. He shared that with me when he left. He said, oh, dear brother, I'll be seeing you again here pretty soon. And I say, real, that's good. But I look forward to seeing you as well. If you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to turn to the book of Mark, chapter 5. Mark, chapter 5. How many of you have a loved one in heaven today? How many of you remember the day when you stood at the casket and said goodbye to them? Turn that down a little bit. I'm getting too much. I want to talk about grief today. How our Lord responded to grief. <coughs> grief is something that we have experienced. Each and every one of us here at one time or another has experienced grief. As a pastor, I experience it probably a bit more frequently than you. I have opportunity to do funerals, to conduct them. When the service is over and the friends are dismissed, the family stays behind to say goodbye to their loved ones. I watch spouses stand at the casket and say goodbye after 40, 50, 60 years. <clears throat> I can't help but think what it will be like when my day comes. Some of you still experience grief. After how many years? And I can tell you that grief, deep sorrow, deep sadness causes extreme distress. But I can also tell you this, that I believe that grief touches the heart of God more than anything else. The prophet Isaiah tells us the Lord himself is acquainted with this wrenching emotion. In Isaiah 53 and 3 we read he is despised and he is rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. We have a very powerful example here in Mark chapter 5 contains our Lord's encounter with Jairus. It begins, let me get there myself, it begins there in, in chapter 21. It begins in chapter 21. When Jesus was passed over by ship to the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. Verse 22, I'm reading from Mark chapter 5. Behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. When he saw him, he fell at his feet. He besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. Heavenly Father, I pray now that you'll prepare our hearts and minds to receive the encouragement that you'd have us to receive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jairus was the ruler of the synagogue in Capernaum. He was all part of the religious system that had, reject, had rejected our Lord. We don't know if Jairus had personally knew the Lord. We certainly know that he had witnessed his healing power at different times. It's probably most likely that it was in Jairus' synagogue that our Lord had healed the man with a withered hand. He was probably among the crowds when Jesus cast out evil spirits in Mark chapter 3 and 11 that cried out, Thou art the Son of God. 
He must have known about the mighty works that our Lord had performed in Chazaran and Bethesda. He was probably with the elders in Capernaum when they came to him and listened to the words that he said, Thou Capernaum, which are exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which had been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day, Matthew 11 and 23. And now that we come to Mark chapter 5, we see Jairus' story. The grief that had come to this ruler's house. We find out that his daughter was, how anybody know, without going further, how old she was? He said his little daughter. Twelve. His twelve-year-old daughter laid in bed sick at the point of death. Verse 23. We don't know what Jairus had thought about Jesus up to this point, but I can tell you that Jesus had his undivided attention. Sometimes in our lives, drastic measures are required in order for us to get our attention where it needs to be focused. It was this terrible grief that brought Jairus to Jesus. If this trouble hadn't stricken his home, I doubt whether he would have came to Jesus. Even the miracle of the restored hand, I believe, didn't touch Jairus as much as this little girl of his. <coughs> and now his little girl lay sick unto death. I can just picture this little girl beseeching Father. Daddy, call for Jesus. He'll help me. Can you imagine? The ruler of the synagogue, who's heard much about this Jesus, <clears throat> didn't want to recognize him. But now he has to. His little girl is dying. And maybe she even said, Daddy, can't you call Jesus? Causes Jairus now to reconsider his little girl now at the point of death. I just wonder what kind of inner battle he must have been waging in seeking our Lord's help. His friends had mocked this man they called Jesus. They called him an imposter. Are you absurd? They wanted to destroy him. They even plotted his death. And if Jairus was to call on him for help, he would be ostracized and cut off and ridiculed. It would cost him probably not just his position, but his place in this religious community. He would be treated as an outcast. And I believe this was probably the reason why there were so many people had followed him. They knew who Jairus was. They knew he was a ruler of the synagogue. Some of them probably wanted to follow him just to see how he'd react to this man they called Jesus. Probably the reason why there were so many. In verse 24, many people sought him. Jairus finally sought Christ. And when he did, he fell at the Lord's feet. Can you imagine the desperation of this father whose little girl is sick to death? Could you picture yourself in the same desperation as he? I could. I'll do whatever I can. And so Jairus fell at his feet and besought him greatly. <coughs> And we're told that Jesus went with him immediately. Jesus was touched by this. He responded in love. Even though our Lord knew that Jairus' faith in him was probably born out of grief. I can only imagine what the disciples might have been thinking. Boy, this man Jairus didn't want anything to do with the Lord. When all was well, now he only wants him because he's in trouble. 
He's come to Jesus because he has no other options. Haven't we also done the same thing at times? Would we be as guilty as he? Have we also, like he, gone other places when we should have went to our Lord? Do we come to him when all other options have failed? Even if grief alone had driven Jairus to Jesus, it was a good place to go. Because our Savior responds lovingly to every hurt, every pain, every grief. And what Jairus did, I'm sure we've all done it at times past. We've forgotten the Lord. We've neglected Him. And yet He was there in our darkest moment. Where are you right now? Maybe you're experiencing grief now in your life. Maybe the Lord is asking the question, will you call on me? When God was chastising Israel, he was deeply touched by their hurt. In Judges chapter 10 and 16, his soul was grieved for the misery of Israel. The Lord had mourned over his people. He was full of deep pain. He had told that generation, I will not deliver you anymore. But in their time of misery, he responded when he saw their grief. We see it happening time after time in the Old Testament. We see the same pattern. God repented because of their groaning. He had pity and sorrow. And I know that grief touches his heart. Even in judgment, God grieves over his children. The psalmist wrote in 106, 45, and 46, he remembered for them his covenant and repented according to the multitude of his mercies. He made them to be paid also of all those that carried them captive. You see, when God sees his children hurting, he not only grieves over them, but he even makes their enemies pity them. Wow. Maybe you're in the midst of some heavy grief now. Maybe someone that's dear to you is suffering or maybe is in trouble or is hurting. Maybe it's a son or daughter who's backslidden and sinking slowly into the death of sin. Maybe it's, some, maybe it's a loved one that's facing severe financial crisis or maybe they've got a message from a doctor of what needs to be done. I can tell you our Lord is moved by your grief. And it's wonderful to have Jesus walking with us through our pain and our sorrow and our grief. As he had did with as he did with Jairus. <clears throat> but there sometimes can be a delay. Our Lord was with Jairus and he was following him home. You got to remember now, this little girl was at the point of death. And as they were going toward Jairus' home, a lady stops along the way and pushes her way through the multitude that had gathered. She knew that if she could just push her way through and just touch the hem of his garment, she'd be healed. She heard of his healing. She had a situation where she had been bleeding. For many years. You know how many years? I found this interesting. I've read this story dozens of times. <laughs> I never caught this. Twelve. 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 Thank you. <clears throat> how old was the little girl? And how long did this lady have her condition? Twelve. This is very significant. Here's what I want to tell you. 